In E.4.1, we're going to describe the formation and depletion of ozone in the stratosphere by natural processes. And before I get into this, I just want to make sure that you don't make this common misconception. Ozone depletion and climate change are very, very different things. And actually, ozone depletion does not cause climate change. It is not a cause. I don't know why a lot of people have that misconception. So we're going to look at the formation of it naturally and the natural depletion of it. And then later on uh, in the subsequent outcomes, we'll take a look at how the unnatural and, and how we're sort of messing with the natural process. So basically, um, we have sun sending ultraviolet light in, into our atmosphere. And what happens is that ultraviolet light will encounter oxygen molecules. And the oxygen molecules, with that added energy, um, the bonds will actually split. And so what you'll end up with um, is these two oxygen radicals. So you can see that with the symbol there. Now, those are obviously very, very reactive. And so what will happen is they will encounter other um, unreacted oxygen molecules in the atmosphere and together uh, they will form O3 which is what we commonly call ozone. So the first step is that one to create the radicals and then the second step is the oxygen like you see here plus a radical giving ozone. So that happens naturally uh, so it's naturally being created all the time in, in the formation uh, and it's also naturally being depleted. So at the same time the Sun is also sending UV that can actually break apart the bonds within the ozone that was just created. So when that happens it breaks down into oxygen and an oxygen radical again. And then what can happen is another ozone, so maybe one like this, will react with that extra radical that was formed in this other reaction and together those just form two oxygens. So the actual process is ozone is constantly being formed and constantly being um, degraded and that why it, that's why it's so important. Um, it's actually absorbing the UV radiation both in the formation and depletion phases, slightly different um, wavelengths which we'll look at in HL and because of that it really protects us from having a lot of the cancers and things like that. So that's uh, you know one of the, the major reasons why ozone is important. It protects us from this dangerous radiation. So why is it uh, depleted easily or, or can we sort of compare these two processes that both use UV? Well, if we look at what the actual structure um, of ozone is, we actually end up with two Lewis structures that make sense. And so they're resonance structures of each other. So what you actually look at is it's really one, two, three bonds for the oxygen. And uh, so three divided by two resonance structures means that the equivalent um, strength of the bonds between each oxygen is 1.5. Um, so that's a little bit weaker than the double bond that's in regular oxygen. So therefore, uh, these bonds are slightly weaker and it's actually quite, uh, it, it takes less energy or a UV with less energy to break um, these oxygens or, or these ozones or deplete these ozones um, back. So to summarize that, we could say the higher energy UV is needed for the formation uh, than for the depletion and that's because of the bond orders. It's weaker bonds in the ozone. And thus, ozone is constantly formed and depleted.